Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I would like to welcome you to the uh, IETF uh, Newcomers Overview. Uh, this is a presentation to get you started in your IETF week. Uh, I am Karen O'Donoghue. I'm part of the uh, education team here. Um, and uh, we are definitely interested in any feedback that you have on this. So at the end of this, you'll see a survey link. We would appreciate any comments that you have. Um, also, I wanted to point out, it'll show up in the presentation as well, but we do also have a newcomer's feedback session uh, on Thursday morning. And the other thing that you will probably get, I don't know if it's gone out yet or not, is Greg Wood, who is the, uh, who works on the IETF website, is interested in getting any newcomer uh, feedback on your experience with the website. Did it provide you the information that was useful to you? Uh, what suggestions do you have? And so there will be an email going out to all the newcomers with a request if you're interested in, in having a short sit-down session or chat with Greg. Um, he will be uh, asking for people to sign up for that, and we would, uh, we would really appreciate it. One of the challenges we've had with the website is, uh, you know, for, all of, for those of us who've been around for a while, it's, we're not really the target audience, and so what's useful to us uh, is not necessarily that. Uh, so without any further ado, um, Rich Sauls will be giving the presentation today. And uh, thank you all for coming. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Rich Sauls. Uh, pronouns are he, him, I, me, mine, whatever. Um, so I'll be talking, the, ses the session lasts about an hour. Uh, it's broken into three parts. The first is some background. The second is what the week is like, uh, real world. And then the third is some additional resources. Uh, how many people, uh, for, is this their first IETF meeting? Whoa, okay, great. How many people are already on some working group mailing lists? Okay, thanks. Um, all right, so this will be hopefully real world experience. Um, I am here through the week. I'll be at the Thursday morning uh, new members debrief. Feel free to come to that. There are, um, there are other people around who you can also talk to. We have a number of activities that I'll go over shortly. So first off, welcome. This is great. We have a very large crowd this time, comparatively. Um, and uh, I think it's on the order of 200 first timers. Looks like most of you are in the room, which is nice. Um, so welcome. We're glad to have you, uh, and we hope you will contribute uh, and continue to contribute. Every meeting, every session at every IETF meeting, and the IETF meets three times a year, uh, starts with these next two slides. So this is the very first session, probably. Um, this is the first time you'll see it. Um, there are two. Um, and by Wednesday, they sort of rush through them. By Friday, everyone goes, okay, you've already seen this before, let's get to all the work. So this, um, this, this slide identifies the policies and uh, when you sign in an attendance list, you're acknowledging that you understand the note well. It is called the note well because it means, hey, note well that these are the policies under which we operate. Um, and it, this is a reminder of what they are. Uh, the fundamental ones are if you say anything, um, you should know that it is public. Um, this is not a closed door industry working group forum. Uh, public in that the meetings are recorded, st often streamed live on the web, um, and they are archived on uh, various video channels. There's a YouTube channel. Uh, Personal information, we try to respect PII, what's called PII, personal identifying information. When you signed in, you got one of two colored lanyards. The blue says, you can take my picture. There's a red one that says, please don't photograph me. Things like that. These are the specific policies. Again, you don't have to read this um, to understand. But the important part is the acronym BCP stands for Best Current Practice. And this is an indirect layer on top of the RFC series. And talk about the RFC series for those who don't know later on. Um, BCP9 points to a specific thing, which is RFC, I don't know, 
2612. It's not, but whatever it is. If the process gets changed and 2612 becomes obsoleted by RFC 5275, I'm just making these numbers out of the air, um, the BCP9 will stay the same. So it's, you know, think of it as a symbolic link. Any problem in computer science can be solved by an extra layer of indirection. This is an example. These are the main policies that are appropriate. It's at some point, you know, worth skimming. If you're trying to avoid jet lag or you're trying to cover from jet lag, you know, skim through these things. Newcomers activities. We have many activities planned for uh, this, this week, as, as we do in previous weeks and we will in the future. Uh, the tutorial, you're getting off to a good start, that's here and now. Usually there are two uh, presenters. We split it one, one, two, three, um, or one, two, and then the first speaker again, but unfortunately this time you're stuck with me for the full hour, 45 minutes. Um, Quick Connections is also this afternoon. That, I believe, is in the Fairmont uh, ballroom lobby. Um, there'll be little tables set up. There'll be experienced IETFers there. Um, myself, Karen, I think, a couple, many people. And it's sort of like speed dating. You f go to a table, talk about, you know, introduce yourself or get introduced, um, or we'll introduce ourselves. What are you looking for? What kind of areas are you interested in? Oh, this person over there is, you know, he's very good. That person over there is really important about, you know, routing an IPv6, to pick an example. The person running the meeting, a guy named Paul Routers, will, you know, every five minutes will say, time, and you move off to another table. The intent is you get a brief moment, people get a brief moment uh, to, under, you know, to meet a couple of old hands, uh, graybeards, if you will, um, meet some peers who are also among the first timers um, or uh, for newcomers and then you move on and, and so on and then that leads there's a short break and that leads into the op opening reception there's also a program called the ITF guides mentoring we used to call it ITF mentors we used to call it IETF guides we couldn't figure it out so now we call it guides mentoring it'll probably next year be mentoring guides who knows um, these are you get us you can sign up and it's off the newcomers link I believe on the website um, you can sign up and say I speak you know here's the languages I speak I'm interested in these particular technology areas and we try to find a volunteer who is available to you for the whole week I don't participate in that I'm not sure uh, of many more details other than that there's a newcomers dinner uh, Monday that is not yeah, you know, that's a pay your own. I believe it's twenty-five dollars Singapore to join, and that's purely newcomers. Chance to meet some of your of the people here in the room, or the seventy-five so who aren't here. As Karen mentioned, there's a feedback session that'll be Thursday morning. Um, all of these items are listed on the agenda, um, so you can find the specifics about details and rooms, um, and that's where you can tell us, "Hey, you guys did really good." I was, or "Wow, I was totally unprepared by Tuesday. I couldn't keep my eyes open." Whatever it takes whatever information you have. We take feedback very seriously um, in that we really listen to it, we really encourage it. Like, we don't, not everybody participates in the surveys and so on, so if five people say, you need to talk about this some more, we will revise these slides and make sure we talk about it some more next time. I should mention the IETF definition of a newcomer is five or fewer meetings, which basically, since there are three meetings a year, that means, you know, for the first two years, you can, if you'd like, consider yourself to be a newcomer. Feel free to come to any of the kind of, any of the newcomer events. Uh, okay, preparing. So, what, what's a little more detail about what I'm going to talk about? Can someone in the back row raise their hand just to make sure I can um, being heard? Thank you. Um, so, the goal here is to present information that is useful to you, starting at the end of this session, running through the week, Friday afternoon. Um, as you attend your first, first-ish IETF session, as you move from being involved on some mailing lists to day-to-day, -day, you know, active participation in the in-room, as we call it, to maybe going back and then joining some mailing lists and so on. Uh, we want to teach you how to make the most out of the meeting. It's sort of a unique, the ITF is a unique experience, uh, unlike, you know, Java 1, IEEE, W3C or whatever. This doesn't talk about the history of the IETF. We used to talk about that a lot. Nobody really cares. 
<laughs> right? The ITF is 32 years old, I believe. Um, many of the people who roam the halls and attend the meetings have been here for all 30 years. It's pretty impressive. Um, and talk about some of the impacts from that long-term involvement. Uh, there is a YouTube channel, as I mentioned. Okay, so now we'll talk about the broader standards ecosystem where the ITF lives. Uh, the mission, and I'll just read this because it's short and it's really sort of an unusual kind of mission. Uh, our mission. The ITF mission is to make the internet work better. That's the short, very, very short summary. We want to make the internet work better. How do we do that? We produce high quality, relevant technical documents. Um, in English, that's the language of the ITF. Notice it says technical documents and not standards. The IETF doesn't produce standards in the way you might think of ISO C or ISO C++ or your local building codes determine, you know, how much steel you need to put in a high rise. We don't do anything like that. None of it is enforced by regulation. Um, the way it's enforced is we in, we design doc, we build documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the net. Okay, so it's purely a matter of well, this is the way everybody's doing it. If you want to do it with everybody else, here's what you should do. Um, you'll sometimes, or you'll, depending on the working group, often hear the phrase, "We're not the protocol police." Um, if you do an, if you're writing a web server and you understand and you have get and you spell it with lowercase nobody's going to come work with you if you change get to take nobody will complain but your code won't work with the browser right so that's the goal you want if you want to interoperate and work with the rest of the world out there um, you know follow the RFCs they are written in English, they are, which means it's a human language, which means there are ambiguities. Uh, we have an errata system uh, where, we can put, where people can point out errors, corrections. We revise standards, so we had HTTP 0 0.9, 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 .1, 2, and now we're developing HTTP 3. For example, TLS 1.0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. It's hard. TLS didn't want to change the first number. HTTP has no qualms. One, two, three, one dot one, one, whatever. Um, the mission of the IETF is described in an RFC 3935. As you attend meetings throughout the week, you'll hear people say things like, uh, oh, you know, that's really not compliant with RFC 2612. And the rest of the room will go, hmm, yeah, that's, that's right. And you'll go, what the hell is 2612? And you might have to look it up online. I'm like that. I can't, I'm bad enough with names, let alone RFC numbers. I'm always impressed when people can just spout off these four digit numbers or now five digit numbers and everybody instantly knows what it means. So, what is the ITF? We're a standards development organization. Notice the previous slide didn't say standards, it says technical documents, but we recognize that what we do are develop standards, no implementation force behind them. Uh, other people pick them up and publish them as standards. We no problems with that. Our documents are openly available, freely reusable, uh, for the rest of it, referenceable. Um, it's self-selected uh, in that anybody wants to join, all you have to do is sign up to a few, the mailing lists that you're interested in. There are about 130 groups. There are about 150 mailing lists. Um, read, participate, write mail, and so on. We don't do formal voting. For example, many national standards bodies or the international like ISO, um, each country gets a vote or each company gets a vote, each member in W3C gets a vote. We just do things by what's rough, called rough consensus. Um, and I'll talk about that in more detail, talk about humming, which is kind of a strange thing. Um, and we'll do an example of that. Uh, there is no formal government role. Uh, the US government used to host what was the IETF and host what was ICANN and the, name, the number authority. Those are all spun off as separate things. The IETF is now a nonprofit organization. You can donate money and get a tax benefit if you're in the US. Um, we're driven by market adoption. 
so unlike some other organizations, um, you can't come in and make the IETF standardize what you're working on to develop market. Um, some others are what's called pay for play. You pay the membership, you, they'll work on a standard for, of whatever you want. Uh, we're focused on the internet um, and we're bottom up. In other words, the people who are in this room and on the mailing lists are the people who determine what the IETF produces. There's no arching, oh, there are some general architecture boards and technical reviews, pardon me, but it's the people working you know, in the trenches, as the phrase goes, who do that kind of stuff. And we like to think we're pretty unique. The ITF is divided into uh, eight areas, seven areas. This is called an eye chart. Um, in that, you know, people sitting in the room there, you're not expected to, well, this is kind of legible. You're not expected to read and understand all of it. Um, take a picture, the slides are available online under, as, I, as shown on the first slide. Um, but everything falls into an area. Um, my particular focus is on security, um, but routing, how the packets get from, you know, one gateway to another gateway. Um, Internet is d d defining the IP and TCP protocols. Uh, transport is congestion control. What happens when the receiving side says, oh, I can't take all your packets anymore, you know? Buffer bloat is a common thing, right? When you see, when you're trying to watch a video and you see that little circle going round and round and round, congestion, um, that's the kind of thing that the transport works on. Applications in real time, art is uh, things like HTTP, web sockets, so on. For the most part, you don't have to care. You can think, just look at the working groups, but understand that in the organization, um, there's the working groups feeding up into the areas, and then there's the steering committee on top. As I mentioned, we work by consensus. The ITF loves this quote. It was by Dave Clark, MIT professor, one of the first ITF developers. For a while, he was like the chief protocol scientist uh, when it was the DARPA project. We reject King's presidents in voting. Um, it's everyone, you know, for themselves. Uh, rough consensus in running code, that's the important part. Rough consensus means everything has to be addressed. It doesn't have to be accommodated. We can disagree, um, but, and running code, you know. The IETF over the past couple of years has added hackathons uh, the weekend before, so yesterday and today, um, and that, wins. You know, if someone says, I can't, this is completely unimplementable, and three other people say it's completely unimplementable, um, it's unlikely to get evolved as an IETF standard spec. Uh, humming, I talk about um, the session chair in this, for example, I am the chair of this session, uh, sitting at the front of the room. Um, we're responsible for either building or uh, talking about what, con you know, determining what consensus is. Every working group has a mailing list, um, and the ma mailing lists are where the official work is done. So when we say, oh, we have consensus in the room, they will then say, okay, we'll take it back to the list to confirm, which means someone, one of the chairs, will post a, you know, a short description. We decided that we need eight bytes for the session identifier. Does anybody disagree? And so, you know, discuss it on the mailing list or confirm and so on. Of course, there's an RFC that talks about consensus and humming. ITF culture, um, passionate, smart, vocal people, which is to say, you know, networking nerds. Um, people love t-shirts, people get free t-shirts, and many people walk around with previous IETF t-shirts as a badge of honor. It's fine, um, dress casually, dress comfortably, you know, Business casual, hotel casual, native dress, whatever is appropriate. I would not recommend walking, you know, barefoot, speedos, topless, things like that. The key point is what we care about is technical excellence. Um, we recognize that many non-native speakers, uh, many people are shy, many people have other concerns or issues, might prevent them from speaking up. But as long as you can make a technical, technical contribution, that's good. That advances the cause of what the IETF does. I mentioned before, some people have been coming for the past 30 years, they meet, it's like family reunions, right? Hey, you know, so-and-so, hey, Mike, how you doing, Bob? You know, whatever. Um, 
I see Karen, you know, three times a year, more often than I see my sisters. Okay, some of the alphabet soup. This is the broader ecosystem of the ITF. <coughs> the thing that looks like a cell over here on the right, on the left, your right. Um, that's the I. That's the IETF. What you think of as the IETF. Each of the areas, and there's three bubbles there. There's no should be seven or eight. Um, has within it the working groups. Every working group is assigned to an area. Each area has two or three area directors. Area directors are responsible for monitoring the progress of the working groups, creating new working groups, creating birds of a feather sessions to determine whether or not a group should be created and so on. The area directors all collectively form the steering group, Internet Engineering Steering Group, IESG. That's the technical leadership of the IETF. Uh, it's appointed, there are overlapping two-year terms. Uh, every year, new people, about a third of the IESG is reappointed. The black box is the nonprofit corporate identity. For example, when uh, the ITF sets up arrangements to have a meeting in a hotel, somebody has to put down the deposits, somebody has to sign the hotel contracts, and somebody has to make all the logistics arrangements, for example, dealing with the live stream and video recording, find folks in the back of the room. Um, you know, you can't just have a thousand people show up and say, I'd like a room, please, at the same time. Oh, and by the way, I want 30 breakout session rooms. It just doesn't work. Uh, the IRSG, Internet Research Steering Group, a parallel organization. They're trying not to deliver standards, but to discuss and promote research. Um, there's a crypto forum group. There is a networking protocols group. There is a privacy impacts of I internet protocols group. Um, the IAB is sort of an oversight of both of those things, the IRSG and the IESG. The RFC editor is a paid set of professionals who do the final document production. IANA, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, is also paid. Um, they do professionals who do things like, oh, DNS goes on port 53, HTTP goes on port 80. And here are some extensions defined for TLS. They just keep the records of what all the numbers are so they don't overlap. I just talked about who does what. OK, now for the fun part. I'll talk about what the week is like. Um, there are many things going on. The IETF, the IESG, among their included in their oversight, is organizing the overall meetings. We have about 130 working groups, eight, about 80 of them meet at any given meeting. There are birds of a feather, it's from the, <coughs> pardon me, saying birds of a feather flock together. Um, that's where we get people who have like interest to decide do we want to f proceed with a formal working group. Uh, there is a working group t uh, Monday on the mathematical mesh. There's another working group on web packaging, which is sort of think of it as Google's AMP project evolved. And I forget, there are three or four other working groups as well, BOFs as well. IRTF meets at the same time. They have open sessions, crypto sessions, as I mentioned, those are the ones interest to me. There is a plenary, which is, this time it's just a management plenary. Plenary is a Latin word that means all together. Nothing else is scheduled opposite the plenary. It's in the ballroom. And it'll be like an hour, two hours of, here's what our budget's like. Any questions for the IESG? Any questions for the IAB? Um, a lot of people sit in the back of the room and make snide comments to each other on a, you know, jabber back channel. Uh, hackathons and code sprints, the developing work on the standards or on the tooling. Uh, that's the weekend before. There are social events. Um, this year, this meeting, I forget, it's at the, some fancy new, you know, high-tech park. Uh, tutorials, this, and uh, I forget what the other one is. Um, deep dives, we're not having one this year. There's lunchtime sessions, some other social things. Uh, tonight is the hot RFC, hot request for, you know, topics. People get 10 minutes to talk about something that's interest, um, and then it's, that's it, move on to the next one, move on to the next one. So you can see things that aren't currently IETF activities that might be. Uh, in the past, I've picked up two or three of the talks and brought them into ACME, the working group I chair. 
Um, so it can be a source of interesting, you know, it's the advanced R&D technology, if you will. Uh, side meetings open time every morning. This session, this week is set aside for unscheduled meetings. Sometimes you sleep late, sometimes <coughs> you just get together with colleagues for breakfast and talk, and then the working groups actually start at 10. There are ac other activities not on the agenda. Uh, hallway meetings, which means often at the end of the session, people gather outside, talk about something or capture the, you know, talk to the working group chair or the people who presented. The tutorials are in different from working groups in that it's usually just the chair who talks, like is in me. Um, we have an app. Um, it's worth getting uh, if you go to the Play, you know, Play Store or Apple Store uh, IETF app. It lists all the schedule. It, it lets you highlight sessions that you're interested in. I think the, iPad, the Apple one is integrated with the calendar, the Android one not. Um, the agenda, um, across from the registration desk, there are bulletin boards <coughs> where updates to the agenda are posted. Um, that'll also remind you where the rooms are, but you know, get the app. Sometimes, I guess, again, this year, we're having paper handouts of the sessions. Working group, okay, this is the main point. This is why you are all here. You got that sponsor to your employees, paid you to come here. This is where all the work is done. The rooms look like this. There's somebody speaking, people running the meeting, the chairs are sitting here. Um, there's mics, you see there's one in the middle of the room there. If people have questions, you go to the mic and so on. The sessions are streamed by the fine folks at you know, Line Speed and Meet Echo. They're always sitting there in the back of the room. Um, often there's a pink box around the mic here so that if you are presenting you know where to stand so that you can be beamed out over the internet or recorded on YouTube. Meet Echo is for online remote participation. That's at the far, the smaller screen over there on the right. Um, when people want to talk, you'll see them come up to the mic. The chair has a handy red button that they can push and recognize someone and then they get to talk just as if it were somebody local talking there. Birds of a feather, more informal, proceeds a working group. Um, they'll be often at the reception, there'll be poster boards scattered around the room about the different boffs. Uh, so people <coughs> running them have signs that say, ask me about my boff. Uh, I gave my, uh, sorry, pins. I gave my pin to the guy who's actually the technical lead of it, and so on. Boff meets once, sometimes it meets twice. And then at the end of that, with the area directors and the, and the BOF folks, determine if there is consensus to do, you know, create a working group. IRTF is officially part of the IAB, the oversight group, uh, focused on research. They meet at the same time. Of course, there's an RFC, 75 or 18. Um, one of the things they do is they present a networking prize, uh, the one of the one or two I think sometimes it's been three, <coughs> of the best papers on networking, how I can fool the router into sending all my packets to, you know, India, for example. Um, they get sponsored to come to the IETF and present their paper. It's kind of cool stuff. It's a way to get some academic involvement. Applied Networking Research Workshop. Uh, it met last IETF. It meets annually in conjunction with the IETF, first two days. Um, it's, very, it's part of the ACM, Association for Computing Machinery, very much a academic organization, even more so than the IRTF. I think IRTF is advanced research and development in an engineering organization. ANRW is actually academic. No cost, free to attend, highly worthwhile. Presumably it'll be at the next, at IETF 108. I forget what that is. Think California. The plenaries, as I mentioned, take the ballroom up, and this time there's no technical uh, part of the plenary. It's just administrative and management of the organizations themselves. Hackathons. The hackathon meets Saturday and Sunday, no cost. If you had signed up, or next time if you want to come and work on something, you sign up, you get, you get another t-shirt, um, free food. Uh, I think about two, 300 people are at the current one this year. Um, there will be a small reception 
uh, with the best results of the hackathon, you know, prizes handed out and so on. Um, the way it works is there's a wiki page where you sign up for topics. <coughs> Excuse me a sec. Pardon me, you sign up for topics or you join or you sign up to work on existing projects. Um, there have been a lot of interop sessions, so TLS 1.3 was at the hackathon for a number of times. Quick is currently at the hackathon. DNS privacy, DNS over TLS, things like that are there. Networking and social events. Um, the ITF attendees list, 106 attendees mailing list. Right now it's about to switch over from what's the best way from the airport through customs to the hotel. And now the main discussion will be, hey, anybody have a social ticket? Can I buy a social ticket? Can I sell a social ticket? Um, this one was from Singapore two years ago. It was at the aquarium. Uh, I forget the name of the park that it's at this time. Uh, the picture on the right, yeah, the right, uh, that's from the IETF Sisters. That is an organization of people who identify as women, identify as female. They have a social lunch, which anyone, you know, who feels appropriate can sign up. They also have activities during the week that are all listed in the agenda. More side meetings, ongoing uh, experiments with the agenda to find more unstructured time. Some working groups don't like constrained in meeting and, and think it's a waste of time. <laughs> it's better to have um, more hallway conversations, more one-on-one, -on -one, more sit down together in small study groups. Um, so, and I mentioned the tutorials, no deep dive this year, this meeting, and the hot RFC this evening. Okay, meeting etiquette, etiquette, behavior. <laughs> um, when you're attending a working session, you generally, you probably know for the most part what working groups you're interested in, you know, why you're here. It helps to read the documents beforehand. Um, behave respectfully, tolerantly, talk, listen, enjoy yourself, get some sleep. That's a silly thing, but the meetings, you know, the, the day starts at, you know, breakfast is at eight or nine. Side meetings, you may or may not have any the first time around, and then the sessions run until six or seven at night. And then the bar boffs start, uh, which is a informal gathering, let's go to a bar. Um, in the past, the IETF has drained the hotels of all the beer they have. <laughs> right? um, maybe not here, but, you know. Um, and that runs, you know, until 11 o'clock at night. Um, I learned this really great Finnish drinking game where you sing a song and say new, everybody drinks. And by the second or third round, you stop singing. You just say new when everybody drinks. But it's fun and you know you're working with colleagues so it's not just you know drinking to get drunk but it, there's a lot of technical discussion going on the whole day is involved with technology and protocols and networking and it extends through dinner and through the night so even if you're not physically tired or even if you're not physically jet lagged your mind is exhausted I guarantee it get some sleep behave respectfully and tolerantly um, we try to all be adults, and there's some things about a code of conduct that I'll mention tr later on. New work. Um, the IETF is always l looking for areas where we can help make the internet better. Um, if there's some idea of some protocol that makes sense to evolve, um, we do less well with APIs, but we <coughs> Um, but if there are protocols or work where you want to communicate over the internet doing something, uh, you know, video conferencing, multi-conferencing, that stuff is WebSockets based. Um, here's how to do it. I'll just skip over this one since it's unlikely to have, um, pardon me, unlikely to have, uh, you're unlikely to have new ideas coming forward. Um, the slides, we gave a tutorial on it uh, one year ago in Bangkok. Session etiquette, okay. Um, that's Yov, who will co-chair back me. He won't be here. Uh, he didn't make it over from Israel this time. Speak directly into the mic. You'll often hear the phrase, especially if you're not used to it. 
people go, eat the mic, eat that mic. And that means, you know, you got to get really close. The mics here are good. In other, se in other venues, they've been not so good. Um, say your name every time you speak. Part of the reason, the main reason why that's done is there is somebody typing it so it's visible online so that people who are watching remotely, say via Meet Echo or the live, you know, the live streaming, um, they know who's talking. After a while, you can tell there are certain people like, and people will go, you know, by Tuesday, they'll be, yeah, Rich Sauls Akamai, and I want to say that. And what was that? You know, um, it's hard. Uh, it's also to encourage, you know, to, you have to acknowledge and take credit, blame, or be associated with the things that are said at the mic. Blue sheets, it's on blue sheet of paper. Historically, it was always on blue sheets. We just like tradition, so we kept it. Um, you sign in, and when you sign in, you agree to follow the practices of the note well, which you all remember was the first two slides, or slides three and four. Technical questions and comments are always welcome. Not, and that means not like, you know, that's really a stupid idea, but have you considered that maybe eight bits for a network is not wide enough? That's a better way of saying it. On the other hand, People have known each other for decades. So there will be people who come to the mic and go, because I've known you for 20 years, that's really stupid, you should do it this way. Don't listen to them, don't take their, you know, don't take their behavior as the way to go. Every working group has a back, cha a back channel, side channel, uh, instant messaging, jabber. Um, mention that in a little more detail later on. Resources. People, the key people, the secretariat. This is the pay, the paid staff who handles all of the all of the logistics. Um, you can see a picture of them there. They wear these blue polo shirts. Um, they run. They're often seen at the registration desks where you picked up your badge. Um, they'll run around the meetings. If you have any problem with logistics or you like you're completely lost, they will answer you. On Friday, as the meeting begins to wind down, they all change into Hawaiian shirts but they're very nice people. Um, also, we have the RFC editor series and the IANA staff, the assigned numbers. Those determine, you know, those keep the registry of, like I said, DNS runs on 53, SSH runs on 22, mail runs on 25. See, I got two digit numbers, I can't do four yet. Um, a notable thing about them, in addition to being friendly and helpful, they will have desks in the same registration area and throughout the week they have candy. So if you need a quick pick-me-up, grab a piece of chocolate or sour tart or whatever they have. Jay Daly is our new executive director. He is paid staff, runs, you know, the one who signs the checks on the direction of the board, negotiates with hotels, does all of the kind of stuff. You've probably seen some emails from him talking about who the hosts are for the subsequent meetings coming up. I think it was Cisco mentioned to do Bangkok next year. Uh, he comes from ISOC, uh, sorry, the, um, the DNS side of the house. Uh, ICANN, couldn't think of the term. Um, so he, know, he understands, you know, the technology. He's a good guy. The ombuds team. We try to be relaxed, friendly, and welcoming to everyone. Um, if you have concerns or issues or feeling pressured or uncomfortable or made to feel or see someone else being made to feel uncomfortable, please find one of these people. If you can't find one of these people, find the helpful secretariat staff and talk to them. Um, Allison, Pete, and I just drew a blank on her name. Sorry. Um, they're all long-term IETF people and they will make sure your issues and concerns are addressed and handled. Badges and dots, I don't think we've done it. Yeah, we did a couple. So I have a blue dot, which means I chair a working group. Um, the color codes, eh, most of these things you won't care about. You'll care about the blue dot for somebody who's a chair. Um, and if you look in the upper left corner of the upper right corner, there's a smiley face. I didn't see many of those, uh, maybe they're not doing it, but that normally means come and ask me questions about the IETF, I'm happy to answer questions. If you don't see those, anybody with a dot should be able or helpful or willing to answer your questions. 
because they've been, they're in a leadership position as part of what leaders do. Oh, ribbons. Uh, there's a sort of ribbons at the bottom. You know, you probably got or seen the new newcomers attendees. There's also nowadays a jar of ribbons and markers to the side, and people can write their own jokes and paste them to the bottom of their label. Um, by the end of the week, and certainly by the after your second or third IETF, there are no funny jokes. It's just, you know, same ones over and over. Uh, newcomers resources, the DAO of the IETF, um, what it means to have rough consensus in running code, um, deliberately modeled after, you know, the Buddha philosophical document of how the IETF works. There's a newcomers page. There'll be a newcomers page for every IETF. Um, so on, tutorials. More meeting resources. There's a wiki. Uh, the wiki before the meeting is usually done, <coughs> monitored especially by local people who will tell you the best way to get from the airport to the hotel, how to use the MRT in this case. Um, there's a first time attendees mailing list. Uh, if you're not on it, consider it, joining it. Um, the ITF Sisters, as I said, is a support group for women, people who present as female, women. Um, and there's other mailing lists, there's social lists, uh, travel companions. We have a slight, lightweight program for spouses, significant others, you know, uh, social activities for them to keep them busy while you're busy nerding out. All of the information. So there are two websites listed here. Um, the top one and the one on the right, the data tracker, or also known as dt.ietf.org. That's the site where you'll find everything about the working groups, everything about the drafts, everything about the RFCs. Who's coming, not who's coming, and, and all the mailing lists. Uh, every mailing list has a charter that says you will, you know, by the end of first quarter we'll do this, by the end of second quarter we'll do that, by the end of third quarter we'll do that. No working group ever meets its deadlines, milestones. They always get revised. They're, the phrase is, it's aspirational. Um, but dt.ietf.org slash wg slash and then the working group name, TLS, WUGH, DNS op, whatever. Um, and that will bring you to a page that looks like the one you see here. Multiple tabs talk about the specific Overall working group stuff, the tab, the fault startup tab is all the documents that are working. And you can see when it started, how many pages it is, what the status is, if it's still a draft, if it's be waiting for, you know, review, and so on. The tools page, links at the bottom, page, pages to the left, is of less importance. This is for folks who want to know, well, which RFC was cited the most by any other RFC? Or where can I find tooling on how to turn, you know, Markdown or XML into an RFC document. That stuff's on the tools page. More and more people are using, are more and more people are migrating from using the tools to using GitHub, which we're developing better tooling for. Um, if you're, if you know, so you can, so often many groups now are putting their documents on GitHub periodically taking a snapshot and posting it to the data tracker for official IETF release. So GitHub is like the author's working copies, and people can make pull requests and raise issues on GitHub. They get addressed or they get delayed or they're discussed in the mail, in the working group email, and then a draft is posted, you know, periodically to the data tracker. Remote participation, the fine meet echo folks. Um, Attendance at the I face to face attendance is not required only if you want to serve on the nominating committee, but you had to have attended a three out of five uh, meetings to get to know people. We support remote attendance completely. Uh, it generally works seamlessly these days. Um, you can see the remote stream over there on, the, on my far right. Um, Meet Echo is a tool, it's browser based so on, it works really well. The network, if you haven't already, um, there are multiple networks. There's, you know, encrypted, legacy, IPv6, IPv4. Um, the name and password for all of them is IETF. 
Um, the only reason to have a name and password is so we can encrypt it to keep private, keep your privacy. Um, it's really fast. It's free in this hotel, you know, the, ho the Swiss hotel in the Fairmont. In general, it's free in the main meeting hotels. Um, you'll never find hotel internet <laughs> as fast and as cheap as it is the ITF meeting. Um, local hosts and the sponsors, you know, bring in equipment and donate it. If you've noticed, you might see, for example, if you go to web search engines, right now it might think that you're in Zurich or Prague because the IP addresses haven't been updated to geolocate properly. It's the same equipment that was in Prague back in March. Uh, there's quiet space, it's called the terminal room for historical reasons, there are no terminals. Uh, there's power, wired ethernet connectivity, there's a help desk and a printer in the registration area if you need to print off your boarding pass, right? On Thursday, that's what everybody does. Jabber. Um, every working group, so um, DNS op, the DNS operations group, will have a Jabber room at group chat at DNS op at jabber.ietf.org. Uh, you can just you know, search for Jabber client. There's a number of free ones. There's a number of phone ones available. You have to get an account on a server somewhere um, and then you can participate. One of the things at every meeting is uh, a Jabber scribe will write down in the room the name of who's speaking at the mic, the page number of the slides that they're on so people who are remote can follow along. If somebody remotely says, I want to say something at the mic, they type it, the Jabber scribe gets to cut to the front of the line and say, relaying for Paul Wouters, this DNS record is invalid, whatever the comment is. Uh, above all, above everything else, enjoy. Uh, the fireworks, we actually had fireworks in Prague four years ago, two years ago. Um, that was a really nice social event. The one this year is supposed to be pretty nice too. Um, lots of smiling faces, um, lots of enthusiasm. You can see the guy in the blue t-shirt there is making a point to one of his colleagues. Um, it is a pretty amazing and pretty unusual time. Um, un it's not like a regular conference, technical conference. Um, the work that we do and the quality and the breadth of the work we do will depend on you as well as everybody else who's here. I think it's about a thousand people, um, 1,100. Um, those kind of stats will be presented at the plenary. Um, have fun, it's a good time. Be nice, <laughs> uh, you know, fill your head full of lots of cool technology and come away with, wow, I really wanna do this, 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 and this. And then slow down and figure out, you know, what's actually manageable. Questions or feedback? Um, the link on the slide title is wrong. It's off by one. It should be 106. That's what the survey, you know, the link in the main body of the slide is correct. There is a, a team, Edu, for educational. We run the, Karen and I are the co-chairs. Uh, we run these tutorials. We have a chair, a, we organize a lunch for the working group chairs. We meet every session to talk about what's new and, and talk about other issues. Uh, we help do the deep dives and so on like that. We're very much interested in what feedback you have to give um, one session we got like three people feedback and then I think the past now we're running between one and two dozen people actually fill out the survey and it's not a contest but I always look to see if we got better ratings than any of the other groups in the ITF so be honest you don't have to puff things up um, oh okay so let me mention humming there's a number of reasons why we hum. Um, for example, you can't look around and see who, you know, if we raise hands and, and say, you know, okay, how many people found this worthwhile? You know, and, oh, you could be intimidated or coerced into voting for someone else or not encouraged to vote the same way somebody else does. You can't see who's really humming. You can't, um, we want a rough consensus of the room. We want to know how most of the people the room feel. Um, and it's really hard to, you can't hum loudly. 
I mean, if I'm here at the mic, I can hum loudly than any of you out there. But, you know, so the way humming works is we'll say, okay, we're going to do a consensus call. And so the chair will say what the options are. And it will typically be, did you find this session useful? And the choices are yes, no, or I need more information. Okay? So you can vote more than once, hum more than once. So we'll ask, how many people, you know, did you find this session useful? Please hum now if the answer is yes. Okay? Please hum now if the answer is no. So, and please hum now if you don't have enough information to decide. Okay, great. So most people, you know, so we, we had a rough consensus. Most people seem to think it was useful. We'll confirm that on the mailing list. We won't, but that's what we would do next is we'd say most people found this session useful. Valid reason to say I don't know yet is, you know, ask me at the end of the week. <laughs> um, but that's the way, you know, all consensus questions and humming works that way. Um, okay. With that, we got about three or four minutes left. Are there any questions? If so, just you can come to the mic. Sorry, uh, I tried to register the Jabber, but it seems like that as a process actually has a problem. Actually, you cannot register JID. I don't know why. Um, if you search for like free Jabber account, you should be able to find some. You don't have to register on the IETF server. A Jabber server anywhere can get you an account that will then let talk to the ITF server. So look for like free Jabber account and you should get like a dozen sites you can sign up on. Um, come to the help desk or come see me, I can help you with that. Uh, Travis Spencer, quick question. Will there be like uh, tutorials this week on writing RFCs, like the details of that? Gotcha. Um, no, there are, there are, maybe yes, there are going, there is a, in the video library, there is a section on like the mechanics of how you write a tutorial, the structure of the XML or the markdown. Um, there are some, we, in the past we've had tutorials on how you do the security section, security considerations area. Um, in general, the best way to learn is like read an existing RFC in the area or you know, read the drafts. The progression is the working group has drafts. The drafts are editors or authors are picked by the chairs. Um, they progress through multiple revisions. And so reading and commenting on drafts is you know, sort of pick it up as a side note. Um, we can consider <coughs> a general, you know, guidelines on how to write RFCs. We might, we'll take that back and, you know, look at it. Could you please uh, pull up the slide on the uh, app? Uh, I tried to search for it on the Play Store. I could not. Um, the simplest way to find uh, it, there it is, um, is if you go to the meetings page on the IETF website, it'll have a direct link, I think, to the apps. Um, there are two, I know in the Android store, there are two apps. One of them, ends, you, you install it, and it says IETF 99. That's the wrong one. It should. Okay. okay. I can show you a screenshot if you want. All right. We basically ended on time. Thank you very much. Have a great week.